Well, it's great to be with you again this Sunday here on Full of Grace Ministry. Uh, we wasn't uh, uh, with you last service because we had a special guest, and her name was uh, Brenda Pefley, and uh, from Trust in the Lord Ministry, or I should say. Um, uh, the meeting place, uh, and we, we are proud that we had her last Sunday uh, teaching on the voice of the Son of God. Uh, here on Full of Grace Ministry, you'll find out that we'll tell you about the Son of God and about who He is fully and completely, and we're always satisfied in Him because we lift the voice of the Son of God really high. We'll tell you who His voice is when He speaks, when He walks, when He talks. He is great God Almighty in the flesh. Uh, so listen to the voice of the Son of God here on Full of Grace Ministry because you're going to hear God talking when you hear the Son talking. Praise God. Today is Mother's Day, and we're glad to be here on Mother's Day. Uh, and we'd like to wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day. If you are a mother, happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, may God be with you this day. But we're going to teach uh, our uh, minister about uh, cleaning our closets out. Uh, uh, if you're a mother or even a wife, um, there's been times we had had to clean our closets out. They get packed up with junk and uh, they get messed up. And uh, um, so we just have to open the door up and and uh, say, oh, it's time to clean up. Uh, uh, in our life, well, we got situations in our life that sometimes we need to open our eyes and open the door and say, there's some things I must clean up. Uh, there's some things I must get rid of. There's some things I need to straighten up on the rack. There's some things I need to just throw away, and there's some things I got to clean up. Trish is going to read to you. I'm going to uh, listen to the voice of God, and let me tell you something. Anytime you hear a minister speak or preaching in a church, you pray for that minister. Uh, you don't know the situations and the thoughts that's in his mind to deliver something from God. Uh, so when you uh, hear hearing a minister preach, Say, God, please give him what we need. Uh, give him uh, the speech and the words and the actions to, um, that somebody can be touched or somebody can be helped. Uh, uh, when you enter the synagogue, we need a preacher to listen to the voice of God and let God start speaking. Uh, when Sister Brenda came on here on Full of Grace Ministry, I told her, I said, just let God have his way. Let God have his way. If we stand up here and do our own thing and our own will and just throw our own situation and then we got our everything just perfect and fine, it's not going to be no good. But if we listen to God, uh, if we hear the voice of the Son of God, uh, we're going to be touched. Uh, somebody's going to get healed because we're not listening to our own self no more. There is a voice speaking and we must have that voice in our heart and speak it out. Thy word uh, have I hidden in thy heart. Uh, if you got a mouth and you love the Lord Jesus Christ and the word is down in there let it come forth in the name of Jesus you know some of our greatest messages has come forth uh, in some of our biggest battles so uh, I was thinking the other day and uh, you know everything that we go through there is a message in it you know there's a uh, uh, the devil always has a counterfeit for the spiritual thing so uh, I was thinking about uh, physically cleaning out my closet. And I thought, well, that's a message in itself. Clean out my closet. So um, I, I want to take a look in my closet. So here we go. The closet is a great metaphor to help us understand what's held us back in the past. Your subconscious mind is like a closet that stores old beliefs, memories, lim limitations, guilt, fears, doubts, and programming. Uh, if your closet is full of old stuff that doesn't fit, that wasn't your stuff to begin with, that doesn't support you, all that old junk will keep popping up and out to block you from getting what you want. When we choose magnificent new things for our life, we want to put new things in the closet, right? 
yet. There is so much old stuff stored in there, there's simply no room. Or worse yet, the new stuff gets all wrinkled and crumpled and uh, drifted by the old stuff that seems to hang in there forever. Old things I need to discard, but I can't seem to let go of them. Cluttered things, hidden things, things that are out of sight in containers that I even forgot were there. There are things put away out of other people's sights, things that's in there that I share only with John and nobody else sees. Get the picture? I, I need to clean out my closet. Not only the cobwebs in there, but the spider that created them, amen? You hear people say, how many skeletons are in your closet? You hear of a homosexual coming out of the closet. It was a hidden thing. Okay, now I'm going to go into some scripture, and then I'm going to turn John loose. Matthew 6, 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay, uh, you know, a lot of times we have filthy rags. So in Isaiah 64, 6, but we are all as unclean things, kind of like unclean clothes, wrinkles. And our righteousness are, is as filthy rags, and we do fade as the leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Okay, and then there's another place I was thinking, iron out the wrinkles. Okay, Ephesians 5, 27. That he may present himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be a holy without blemish. And then I got to thinking about keeping my garments, my good garments. Okay, Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Then I got to thinking about my closet transformed. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. God bless everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Praise God. Now you should get a lot out of what she just said. And I like what she uh, uh, read in Isaiah. Uh, when, when we speak about uh, the uh, things that we do as claiming to be righteous, uh, uh, in Isaiah 64, 6, she said, uh, but we all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness, our righteousness, our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Something has taken us away. Something has blowed us in the wind, like the wind just blowed away. But our righteousness are as filthy rags. When we are cleaning out our closets, there are some things that should not be in there. Some things you and I might have that we just want to keep that we know that it is no good. And so we try to find a reason to keep them things that are no good. In our life, in our closet, uh, we've got situations that we know we need to get rid of. We know we need to clean up. But for some reason, we try to justify every little thing we need to clean up. Uh, we try to keep all the wrongs and say, no, I need this for this reason or that reason. Our righteousness are as filthy rags uh, because we want to clean, keep things that we should not keep in our closet. We want to keep things in our life that we know we should not.
God do. And by our own righteousness, we try to justify and say, no, I'm going to keep this or I need this later. If it needs to be get rid of, get rid of it. Uh, Because God's righteousness is what we need, not our righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But the righteousness of God, that is what He wants. Uh, Clean your filthy rags up. Throw them out. Put on the righteousness of God. God only hears the prayers of the righteous. Now, our righteousness are as filthy rags because we want to keep this little sin, that little wrongdoing, that sin. And we got the nerve to say, God loves you anyhow, no matter what. If He wants you to clean your closet, clean it up. Uh, Throw it away. Get rid of that thing that's holding you back and keeping you going forward. She mentioned things about uh, that we take out of our closet. If you take it out, then you make a decision. Where are you going to put it? You, are you going to give something that's no good to somebody else? Are you going to do that? They don't deserve your no good things. Uh, the things that you do wrong, don't put it on somebody else. If it's wrong for you, if it's no good for you, it's no good for the next person. So if you cleaning out your closet and say, well, this ain't a bit of count. I think I'll give it to so-and-so. So-and-so don't need it. If it's no good, we must produce Good fruit, uh, a good spirit, uh, a good uh, uh, thing from God. Something that we need to keep. If you look in that closet and see a hidden Bible, let me tell you, you need to keep it. Uh, But if you are going to get rid of it, I say give it to somebody. Share it with somebody. That's the good you need to give out. That's the good you need to produce. Uh, That's the good that's going to help you get away from friends that turn you away from God. And when I say turn you away from God, the way they turn you away from God is anybody that is drawing you away from the name of Jesus. And everything that we must do, we must do all in the name of Jesus. Our word and our deed must be in the name of Jesus. When I say everything, I mean everything. He, here on Full of Grace, Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega. Here on Full of Grace, Jesus Christ is first and He is last. No in between, no after or in the beginning. He is the beginning and He is the ending. He's sitting alone upon the throne. You can read it in the Bible. His name is Jesus. Sets up there. By the right hand of God. By the power of God. You can read it in the book. Sitting on the right hand of hand the power of God Jesus Christ is that power he has the hand of God he is that power now this mother's day we're talking about cleaning our closets out growing up as a child uh, didn't mother keep you throughout the years till you made it to where you are now till you got a little older to be on your own She wiped your nose. She wiped other parts of your body growing up. She kept you from harm. She taught you. She might have took you to church or she told you don't run out in the highway. There is a mother that was there. Let's be real. If we're going to clean our closets out, I bet a lot of us could say, some things about our mother that you did not agree with. I don't think mother should have done this. I don't think mother should have done that. Let's clean our closet out. Let's be real. Let's clean our closet out. Didn't you as a child get some whippings? Didn't you as a child get scorned and told to sit down and don't open your mouth? Mother was cleaning you up. But I bet as you got a little older, you wanted to clean mama up a little bit because you did not agree with every little thing that happened. Let's clean our closets out. 
Let's thank God for mothers. Let's thank God. Is mothers perfect in all things? I bet we all can find some kind of fault in any mother, any father, any son, or any daughter. It's just the way we are. We can find faults. The human race can find faults. We're going to clean some closets out. We need to clean some faults out. Uh, uh, some faults of our mind and faults that we see. Uh, uh, we judge people. We see the things they do. And uh, the lot of times that we do judge, we know that it's wrong, uh, the things they're doing. But God is the, the true judge because He knows all things. He, His judgment is true. But we know people are doing things that they should not do. But we're living in the day and hour that we try to justify things. Uh, the day and hour that we're living in now, uh, we're calling wrong right. We're calling right wrong. Something is wrong with it. Uh, uh, something is not right with this. If it's wrong way back then, it's wrong right now. If it's right uh, way back then, it's right right now. And I'm talking about the wrong and the right of living a holy and life acceptable to God our Father if it's wrong back then, it's wrong now. Here on Full of Grace Ministry, we just get real. We call sin, sin. We don't justify just because I like this sin. I think God loves me anyhow. I think I got the mercy and the grace of God. Let me tell you, church, we turn the mercy uh, into lasciviousness. The grace that He gave us pulled us away from that dirty closet. You don't stay in that filth no more. Uh, so the grace He gives you, He cleans that closet up. Uh, we don't turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Praise God. I want to interrupt for just a minute. Something came to my mind. You, have, you know, I've watched that show, Hoarders, and I wondered to myself, you know, these people to have all this junk, even sometimes even trash, and they're attached to every single item in that house. And they don't need none of it. But they're attached to everything that they pick up and bring in that house. And it's hard for them to discard anything, even the trash. <laughs> so when we have this trash, we need to clean it up. Clean it up. Of course our closet can get dirty. Cobwebs can get in it. It starts, uh, it packs up memories. Memories. Uh, well, you bought this uh, many years ago. You bought this uh, uh, a couple months ago. Or you put this in there maybe a couple days ago. Memories. Let me tell you something, church. If we're cleaning our closet out, there is some memories we must throw away and get rid of. Uh, uh, there is a great cleanup man, Mr. Clean. His name is Jesus. Uh, here on Full of Grace Ministry, we are not afraid to call upon the changing God that it can clean you up. His name is Jesus. This world was in a bad, filthy way before there was a man that stepped out of heaven that came down in a manger. They called His name Jesus. It was a Emmanuel, God with us. He came a long way to planet earth uh, to become a man like you and let me tell you we was created in his image and when when we leave this world we are going to be likened unto him likened unto who jesus christ our creator our loving god we must clean ourselves up we're in a place of cleaning up uh, did you know this planet has got uh, i think uh I don't know how much water. It's got more water on it than land. Why is that? 
because the land is filthy. We need water. We need somebody to come out. That The one that created that water, we need someone to come out and walk on that water. We need someone to come out and rescue you from the drowning water. Uh, let me tell you, there was a time when Noah was on this planet. He, uh, everybody went under. But he kept the family from going under because Noah heard the voice of the Son of God like uh, uh, Sister Brenda Petley told. Hear the voice of the Son of God. When I hear the voice of the Son of God, I know it's God Himself speaking. And the voice that spoke out of heaven when Jesus went down under the water said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased of. Listen to Him. Listen to Him. I'm going to listen to Jesus if the Pope doesn't like it. My Father told me to listen to Him. I thank God one day I heard His voice. And when I heard His voice, I knew then I was a sheep. I was a follower. He was my shepherd. I Hear His voice. He said, My sheep hear My voice. And a stranger they will not follow. They're not going to follow no strange God. They're not going to follow a God they cannot see. My God showed His face in the face of Jesus Christ. The one true living God came down in a one true living person. His name was Jesus Christ. There's power in that name. There will always be power in that name. Death cannot hold you down if you're in that name. He is the Resurrector. This morning, we need to be cleaned up. So when we are buried in Christ, wash us good. Wash us in a name. That name is Jesus Christ. Clean the filth out of our closet. Be baptized in the precious name of God Almighty. If you don't know His name, here on Full of Grace, we tell you, His name is Jesus. One way no man can go up to the Father but by Him. If you go up any other way, you're like a thief. You're like a robber. You're robbing Jesus of all the power He has. You're robbing God. You're like a thief and a robber if you bypass Jesus. I went into a restaurant the other day. I seen a bunch of bikers coming in. I said, oh my, what's going to happen? They kind of look rough. They had their tattoos on their arms. They had their women next to them. And then next thing I noticed, they gathered around and they started praying. And I said, well, the, in my mind, I said, well, this is good. Oh, we got a bunch of bikers praying. And then I listened to the prayer because I believe in the power of prayer. But this is what I heard. I don't know the exact words, but one thing really caught me. They said, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, and Father God. Father God and Father God. I said, well, that's good. I wonder if they're going to put Jesus at the tail end. I thought for sure they put Jesus at the tail end. And this group did not even put Him at the tail end. He wasn't the first and He wasn't even the last. Then I heard them say, in the name of the Lord. My friend, when you talk about the Father God, He has a name. Call Him by His name. His name is Jesus. He will clean you up. If you're riding a motorcycle, it will shine. If you shine in the sun, His name is Jesus. Don't be afraid to call His name. If you're brave enough to go into a restaurant and pray to Father God, so be it. But there is a name that Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Uh, there is a name we call on. This Sunday morning, let's clean ourselves up in that closet. If you see another God, get Him out. Uh, it must be Jesus. Uh, we cannot share. He will not share His glory with another. He will not share His glory with another. He is a jealous God. Jesus is coming back after somebody that kept their garments clean. 
Just like she said in Ephesians 5.27, that He might present it to Himself a glorious church, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemishes. Our clothes sometimes are full of blemishes. Why do men keep socks that's got holes in the toes? Why do we men? Uh, somebody answer that. Why do men keep socks that's got holes in the toes? Why do we do the things we do? What is in our closet? What do, why do we do the things we do? We must need to straighten up. Well, what do we need to, uh, what do we need to keep? What do we need to throw away? What do we need to get rid of? May we, we may just need to rearrange some things. Just why do we keep the things we do? If a sock got holes in it, you know you don't need it. There's things in our life we do not need. Why can't we take the steps and get rid of it? Get it out of our life. You know what's holding you down. You know what's brought you this far. You're the road that you have taken got you where you are. Now, if you're in a bad situation and you're looking around you and your life is in a mess, what did you do? Where did you go wrong? What got you in that situation? Not satisfied with your mate, your wife, or your husband? What did you do wrong that got you in that situation? I have found out uh, that a lot of wives uh, will keep men praying because they get themselves in situations and they get so mad at their wives they have to ask for forgiveness all the time. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. If it's not to the wife, they got to pray to God. God, I've said something I should not have said. Forgive me. That wife keeps you praying. That husband keeps you praying. Causes you to do and say things you shouldn't do. Why, 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 why do, do we do the things and get in the situations and the mess we in? Some people won't get down on their knees and pray unless they're sick. Unless something horrible happens in their life. Then they start calling on preachers. They start looking for somebody that knows Jesus. They, they start running to a Jesus follower. I need prayer. This is happening to me. That's going on to me. My friend, you and I need prayer before anything happens to us. Uh, we need to uh, want to pray and praise our God whether you're sick, laying in the bed, or not. God inhabits our praise. Why do we have to be made to pray? Uh, the Lord said, Rejoice in thy infirmities. And rejoice in our affirmities, I told Trish earlier today. Wonder if our infirmities are just keeping some people straight. If we had no problems, if we had no sickness, nothing going on in our life, what would we be doing? What would we be doing? If everything was feeling good, we have the right kind of clothes, the right kind of hair, and we just feel good all the time, what would that goodness lead us to? What places would we go to? Would that goodness lead us to church? Would that goodness uh, pick up the Bible? Would that good feeling uh, make you want to worship God more? Why does people get closer to God when bad things are going on? Why do they call upon God when there's a storm cloud out there? Why do they say, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And why don't you ask for forgiveness without any storm arising in your life? We need to clean up some things in our life. We need to want to worship God before we get in a bad situation. We need to have the, the love of God and show Him love before we are made to. 
before we are made to. He said, Lord, I did this wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Forgive me. Please heal me. Please take this away, this hurt, this battle I'm going through. Take it away. My friend, love him enough when you're feeling your best and say, Lord, keep me right. Forgive me. Uh, Keep me on track. Don't let me get off track. Don't let me get my closet filthy. Don't let me uh, get it all dirty and piled up. Keep me and teach me to clean it out every now and then and say, take that out. Take this out. Take that sin out. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't put me in a situation that I have to ask for forgiveness. The man on the cross Jesus is our only way, church. The man on the cross. Jesus Himself said, if you go up any other way than by Him, you're like a thief and a robber. There was a thief and a robber on the cross. A thief and a robber on the cross. But you know what on that cross? He looked at Jesus. He looked at Jesus. And He said, remember me in thy kingdom. Did you know what? He did not bypass Jesus at all. He didn't go to another person. He didn't go to another God. He looked at Jesus, the great God that came down and shed His blood for you and I. And He said, remember me in thy kingdom. And you know what our great God said that was on that cross? This day you will be with me in paradise. He did not bypass Jesus. You want your closet clean? You want to go to heaven? You want to make sure you get there? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. The man that died for you. That had no greater love than no other man, no other God would ever do what this man did. He came a long ways from heaven. But he shed a drop of blood that I might be saved. His name is Jesus. It's a God. It's a God that loves. It's a God that came down. It's a God that showed His face. It's a God that walked among us. It's a God that talked among us. It's a God that lives with you day and night. It's a God that speaks to you early in the morning. It's a God that speaks to you in the mid hours of night. The Holy Ghost. I'm talking about Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. i go with you all the way. Where are you, Jesus? Where are you, Jesus? If you feel the Spirit of God, let Him talk to you. Call Him by His name. It's not another God talking to you. It's Jesus. It's the One that said He'll never leave you or forsake you. The Word He puts down into your heart. The Word is going to carry you on out of here. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word came down. And the Word liveth right now. He speaks and He walks and He talks. He teaches. It's the Holy Ghost. His name is Jesus. Let's clean our closets out. Let's clean our closets out. What is in our closet? What do we need to straighten up? What? What? Examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. 2 Corinthians says, praise God, we're living in a time that we just want to justify everything. 2 Corinthians 4 and 2 through 3 says, but how renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully. Deceitfully. But by manifestations of the truth. Here in Full of Grace Ministry, we only know one truth. One truth. That truth is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So we give you truth. Manifestations of the truth. Commanding ourselves to be ever man's Conscious in the sight of God. You want to give man's conscious sight from God? Give him Jesus. 
give them the word of truth. Uh, this world was in a bad situation. The church was in a mess. Uh, the church was filthy, needed to clean their clauses out. But there was a man named Jesus that opened the church door one day and he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Oh, this day your scriptures have been fulfilled. Uh, when he read one passage, passage, he said, let me tell you something. You have no church if you have no God in it. That's name, Jesus. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your Savior. He's the man that walked on water. He's the man that rolled back the tomb. He is the man that resurrection. He's the one that says, come forth and believe it or not. When you are dead and in your grave, He is going to, His children is going to rise first. His children. Be His children. You have a God to be proud of. I don't know any other God going to come get you. Our God. Praise the name of our God, Jesus Christ. The name of our living God that came down in the flesh. Hear the voice of the Son of God. Hear the voice of the Son of God. We need a light in our closet. We need to get some things out. We need to clean up. He revealeth the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with Him. Praise God. God knows you. He knows what's in there. He knows all the thoughts and situations in your life. You're sitting around thinking bad things, thinking bad things on your, your mate, your wife, your husband, thinking about how mean you can be toward them, what trick you can pull on them. Get the things out of your closet. God wants to speak to you. If He puts you in the situation that you're in now, nobody can change nothing but you. If you got yourself there, you're the only one that can change it. Grass is not greener on the other side. So all the bad thinking in your closet is not going to help. Get some fertilizer. Put it down on your grass. Get the weeds out of it. Mow it. Keep it short and clean. Clean it up. Grass is not greener on the other side. A sanctified wife will sanctify the husband. A sanctified husband will sanctify the wife. Somebody in that family got to produce Jesus or it's lost. Uh, they're both lost. I heard that divorce rate is 50% when you get married. Uh, that's what it was. 50%. You have 50% to stay together or to apart. Uh, but you know what I heard the other day? That the rate of divorce has went up 200%. Uh, to me, it sounds like you don't have a chance. Somebody better be holding on to a name. Jesus is the only one going to keep you, keep you together. He's the only one that's going to keep you together. It's got to be a name in that house. And no titles won't do. It's got to be a name in that house. Jesus got to keep it together. You can have a title on your house. Don't mean nothing without a name on the house. You can have a title on your car. Don't mean nothing if you don't have a name on the title of that car. You can get baptized and well, with titles if you don't have a name on it. You went down as a dry sinner, came up a wet sinner. You must repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how they got the gift of the Holy Ghost, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, after that happened, here comes some people around speaking in tongues that did not get baptized in the name of Jesus. Here's another group that came around speaking in an unknown tongue. And the, the questions was asked to Jesus' disciples. What do we do with these that are now speaking in tongues as we are? 
Because we was baptized in the name of Jesus. What do we do with these people that are speaking in tongues? You know what the answer was? Baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if they got the real tongues, if they got the real Holy Ghost, they're going to go down and they're going to love that name. They're not going to uh, put that name on the side. They're not going to put that name at the tail end. That name is going to be Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. He's going to be everything. And that's all they need when they go down in water. Because He's everything. Alpha and Omega. Father. Son, Holy Ghost, wrapped up in a name that we need. Clean your closets out. If you're dirty, run to the baptism water in the name of Jesus. You know, I want to say something. I've got a lot of things I've got to clean out. I have changed a whole lot, but there's a lot that still needs to be changed in my closet and cleaned out. And you know, I keep this man humble, and this man keeps me humble. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, we've got to be like little children. And you know how little children are. Little children will get uh, upset with each other. They'll be playing. They'll just get upset. And then the next thing you know, they're just forgetting about it and just going on about their business. we got to become as little children. And I, I want to tell everybody, happy Mother's Day. And we love you. And I hope that you get something out of this. Because, you know, we need to clean out our closets. We need to have a closet organizer, which is the name of Jesus. We need to let him rearrange us and, and fix us just the way we need to be. And I want to praise him and lift him up. God bless you all in Jesus' name.